Hi, I'm Jonathan. And Kyleen Jones. And we're the Provident Preppers. And today we have got a special treat for you. Have you ever wondered where you can store all this food that you need to accumulate? Stay tuned. Very often as we teach our classes or as we talk with our clients, one question comes up over and over. I'd really like to do this, but where do I find the space to put it? It's just an excuse. And we're going to show you today how you can find space to store your food so that your family will be protected when you need it. We're really excited about this and we've got some really creative things that we want to show you and I hope that it will get the brain gears turning in your head and make it possible for you to figure out how to get this done. Here we go. Today we're talking about creating space for your food storage and we have some really awesome ideas to show you. Um, these are real life people that uh, we have been able to get pictures and their insights and the bottom line here is we, we try and take away your excuses. So if you want to keep your excuses you don't want to listen to this but we often hear, I just don't have room for it. And yet, if we go into their home, we can find all kinds of spaces that are unused or underutilized or where there's junk. And that's not our call to make. But <laughs> if, you, if you really want to do this, you will find a way to get it done. And we're going to show you some ideas. Uh, we have a post that you can look at. Uh, Google the Provident Prepper, Ingenious Places to Store Your Emergency Food Supply. And really important is your storage conditions. Um, obviously not everybody's going to have the ideal storage condition. You have to do the best with what you've got, but to the extent you can, you want it to be cool and dry and dark. And then you want to make sure that your shelves are sturdy enough um, so that you don't have problems with things breaking or safety issues with uh, things falling off and creating um, disastrous consequences. And as one who is married to an engineer, you would think that I un would understand the laws of physics better than I do, but I don't. And sometimes I don't feel like they should apply to me. But I went to one of my friend's homes who was so excited to show me her new stu food storage room. And I was really worried when I saw her shelves, that they were really flimsy and, and that they just were not going to be able to hold up that weight. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, I just don't know because I'm not John. And anyway, um, I got a call from her several weeks later saying that all of a sudden one day she heard this huge crash and all of her food storage ended up on a pile on the floor and, you know, cans and broken glass and make sure that you take the time, make sure that your, your shelves are, are sturdy. Um, Google the Provident Prepper, eight enemies to your food storage and how to slay them for some really good information on how to make sure you're storing your food. Again, on the subject of heavy duty shelving, there's a variety of ways to do that. There are commercial ones available, as you can see on the right hand side there. We got a great deal on those. I don't remember where it was, but you can find some really good shelving and maybe even some used shelving. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but you can also make great shelving just out of lumber and uh, you can do that fairly inexpensively and make sure that you secure your shelves because they they're carrying a really heavy load and we do live in earthquake country and so we have a little passion for this but if you look in the very center there you will see that jonathan has anchored those shelves to the concrete wall to make sure that if somebody's in that storage room um, that they won't be hurt yep and just to preserve your food supply yeah, true. That's another very important thing. Uh, here's another example of uh, our glass bottle storage. This is a room that does not have any windows, so it's a, a really good place to store these kinds of things. And again, I just built some shelving out of two by fours with some fur strips and then some shelving material. They are very stout and sturdy. Your creativity can get you a long ways. Uh, now we're going to go over some basement storage rooms. We recognize that everybody doesn't have the option for this and we have other options later, but this is the ideal because it is cool, dry. Well, not always dry, but cool and dark. That stable temperature is so important to your food storage. Um, that We're going to tell you the occupation of the people who own these rooms, but that's as much as you get to know. This is, belongs to a fireman. He's done a great job here of 
making his own rolling can racks. Those are those are really cool. This is a postal worker, and they actually were able to get some store shelving from a store that was going out of business or Lucky. upgrading. So what a great deal. They're heavy duty, and they are, you can see it really facilitates organization. You just need to kind of be aware and look around and find a solution that's going to work well for you. Yeah, I love the way she has used every space. Look, all those cans, they are stacked clear up to the ceiling. There is not any wasted space, which is really important. And do you see how um, she's done a fairly good job of taking those really tall cereals and putting them together and then making shorter so that you're not wasting space, so that you're just utilizing every bit that you can. There's one thing I wanted to show you here. Up in the top of the commercial shelving on the right, do you see how she has those tubs full of brown sugar? So that is totally cool because that brown sugar, just putting that extra little barrier against the outside environment will help that brown sugar stay nice and soft for a significantly longer period of time. Um, they've also created this wall of, of buckets. So they've got a lot of food stored in this little place. This one is a school teacher and he's done a fantastic job of starting his food storage. He's got a lot of longer term food storage mixed with some of the, the shorter term food storage, which is a great combination so that you have lots of of different um, foods, but they are just well on their way. And I I really like how he's made sure that it's up off the ground. If you look at those boxes, they are on very, either wooden boards or right. little pallets. I think this one's on a pallet right there. And that makes sure that if there's any moisture in that basement at all, they're not gonna damage their food supply. This is actually a member of a SWAT team. And this is cool, there, there are two pictures there. Sometimes on the slide, it's a little bit hard to tell, but they have a rolling can rack They've got a combination of foods that they've purchased and foods that they have bottled at home, and they are just really well on their way to, to making a, a great start here. This is the pantry. It's, this is actually a really little closet. You can't tell that very well because of the way the picture is, but so this little, little widow has this little closet where she's got these rolling can racks, and she's got her buckets and her cans, and she's just doing a great job of of trying to make sure that she has some food stored. All right, so now we've finished the basement ones, but let's talk about closets. Everybody has closets. Nobody has enough, but everybody has closets. This is a very, very long, narrow closet. And the picture on the right is taken from the inside of the closet looking at the door that leads out of the closet. And the other one is taken from the door looking in. So they've done a really good job of creating some great heavy duty shelves in here to store this food. One thing that I might add to it is along that back wall. It just kind of looks like a little bit of space that but right. we didn't take advantage of. Right. And that's sometimes it's a game of inches and you have to take advantage of every little spot that you have. Yes. And look again, it goes all the way up to the ceiling. So important. Don't waste that space by the ceiling. Talking about this, this is the inside of a closet and We've got these cases of number 10 cans. Each of these cases holds six number 10 cans and they are just tucked snugly up there. There is not a bit of wasted space up there. Okay, this is uh, just a shelf that we put in our uh, master bathroom toilet closet. We were It's looking... a very small room. Very yeah, it's, small. It's, it's fairly small. You can see just from the width of the door, it's not too much bigger than that. But we were looking one day and decided we could create a little shelf up there it's hardly even noticeable, but we have a year's supply of toilet paper and feminine supplies right there, uh, completely out of the way and using space that would otherwise be idle. Yeah, and that's a year's supply for four people. It's amazing how you can accomplish that. So think, where do you have these little places above doors? Um, and be careful, Don't I, that's not a place where I would store canned food. Right, right. Right, that right above a, the toilet. That, that would be, be a painful <laughs> process of... <laughs> but the toilet paper be okay okay under the bed think about your horizontal surfaces that you have in your vertical surfaces right you've got to evaluate them all but beds take up a lot of space and then you've all got that space under them so what could you do with that space this is just a picture of um this is a, a king size bed because and this is the dad's side because he's got the baseball bat under there but that's how they store their food it fits really nicely under there on this bed, they had to get a riser because the bed frame would not allow for the space that those cans would take up. So those are very inexpensive, very easy to find. And what, and what a, a, yeah, what a really great way to create some space that 
otherwise wouldn't be there. Yeah. And then you don't have to clean out under the bed. Perfect. So now we talk a lot about um, one twin size bed can supply almost a year's supply of food for the person who sleeps in that bed. And Don right. will help you with these calculations. Right. And basing this on five, five pounds average for a can, obviously oats are a little less and rice is a little more. But just uh, on that basis, under this twin size bed, we could fit 12 cases or 72 cans of food, which is 360 pounds, which again is just about enough for a year's supply for a person. And with the long-term sh shelf life, you, you could put it under there when they're born or when they move into that bed, and it could stay there till they are off to college and beyond, and it's still good food, and it's providing that security. And then you can see also the full size the queen size and the king size, tw 24 cases under the king size bed, 750 pounds of food. Wow, what a what a asset that you have there. Here, uh, here's the calculations on the buckets. Uh, we assumed 35 pounds for a five gallon bucket. And so you can see there under the twin bed, full bed, queen and king size beds, how much Look at that on the on the king size, fourteen hundred and seventy pounds. That is a uh, lot of food. If you're assuming thirty five pounds uh, per bucket, so there are some really creative ways that you can get this done. Um, and the last under the bed that we wanted to show you is for you know you've got those kids that are going to college and that just don't have a lot of space to do very much, but they have these little rolling totes that roll very easily inside and out of out from underneath the bed where you could do your shorter term supply, your cans of foods and your granola bars and the ramen and all those kinds of things that like the, the college kids might need. There's really no reason for them not to have food because it would be very easy to put a couple weeks supply of food just underneath the bed in this nice little rolling tote and keep it all, all together. I know as a parent that would make me feel a lot better if I knew that my child uh, 50 or 100 miles away had that stash just to take care of them in an emergency. Yeah, I'm not sure how long it would be stashed and how long it would be before the granola bars. We might have to go mm. every month and re restash yeah, them. Probably. <laughs> Resupply them. Okay, this one was totally cool. We went to visit our daughter and she wanted theater seating really badly and she'd bought these new couches and she bought this suede, this black suede, and she wanted us to help her make a skirt to go under it so that she could have this theater seating for their football games and all their fun stuff. They had originally had it up on cinder block and it just wasn't working because the couch was sliding and, and Jonathan said, hey, I've got the perfect solution. Yep, and it, and it was, it turned out perfectly. We were able to get rid of the rickety blocks that were under there that Which were dangerous. actually dangerous yeah. because their little girl could climb in under there and if those uh, collapsed, it, yeah. it could have been very, very dangerous. So we created a situation where they now have these cases of storage. I think it was nine cases of storage uh, um, pretty that we were able to put under there. It made it a safe thing. Uh, the suede skirt made it look pretty nice and, and now the people on that back row can see the big screen TV and it just worked out really well. Another very, very creative way to, to help get this happening. Um, and then think about furniture. What furniture do you buy? What could you buy? These are just some portable little um, closets or little... Cabinets. They're little they're cabinets. And they were just up against a blank wall. And then they're filling them with their three-month supply of, of food. And, and they've got their water bottles. And just great stuff. This is actually my laundry room. And we have to use utilize every bit of space that we can. But the example that I wanted to show you here is that the cupboard that is open houses all of the medications and our first aid supplies, like the family first aid supplies, so that it's all very handy, and yet it's up and out of the way, but it's all up there and organized. But on top of those shelves, there's that dead space. We've got those totes up there to make sure that we're utilizing every bit of space that we possibly can, freeing up other space for the this was another really cool thing that was done. Right, right. This was a, a little closet under stairs. As you can imagine, under stairs, there's a, a bunch of wasted space. Uh, they had created a small closet, but there was still more room that after the wall was cut out and, and reframed, there became substantial little spot there 
that you could use for some storage. And they were so creative. So those little shelves that you see those cans on, those were actually for DVDs. Those are DVD shelves. But they work absolutely perfectly for those cans because you've just got this little narrow space. And anyway, fantastic job. And then once again, they're taking it all the way up to the little ceiling on there. Garage storage is a another great asset for you. Now, this may, may not be really good for your food storage because uh, garages typically, at least in our area, go from highs of well into well over 100 in the summer to uh, down near freezing in the winter. And that's not the kind of environment you want for food. But if you can create storage space out there for a lot of other things, then you free up space in prime food area. Yeah, that's right. That for, high, high. for your storage. And so these are just, again, some heavy duty shelves built in the garage that hold a lot of things. You can see toys and, and all kinds of things on there. And it has freed up a lot of space. Here's another uh, example in the garage of a suspended storage rack. Again, just being very creative and finding spaces that aren't being utilized doesn't affect any other aspect of their life right there, but it creates space for them to put important things. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about some very unique ideas when you're really looking for other spaces. These are all intended to be root cellars, and one of the things about root cellars is that they have a high moisture. So if you are storing other things besides your vegetables in there, you would really need to make sure that you compensate for the high moisture. This is a cellar that Jonathan made. We buried a, a freezer and if you look very carefully at that, he has put vents in it so that it has plenty of airflow going through and then he built a, a special pallet that goes over it. The straw that you see goes on top of it. So it does a really good job of maintaining that temperature and keeping our, especially potatoes, we store a lot of potatoes in there. Right. Another example, this is a buried barrel. A trash can with holes drilled in the bottom, uh, buried in the ground, and you can see a little pallet over the top to just protect it a little bit. It does a, a wonderful job of keeping carrots and beets and potatoes clear into the early spring. Just another creative idea. Yeah, so if you wanted to use this for different purposes, you would need something that was waterproof, that you're not going to be able to get any moisture in there at all. One more, this is our window well, one of our window wells in our basement. And what we did for this is we put a sheet of OSB on top of it. And again, we use lots of straw bales, but on top of the, the board so that the, the board would stay, wouldn't blow away. And then we took these crates and you can see we've got the butternut squash and the potatoes and things. And we actually stored them inside of a basement window well. And when we needed them, we just opened up the window and got our food out and then closed it back. And it, it worked fairly well. It's a little bit inconvenient, but when you're trying to get creative. That's right. Yeah. And our last one is check around your house. What do you have that's empty that you could fill up? Suitcases are a fantastic example. Those are stored empty. Maybe we should store them full of food. And if you travel a lot, it may not be real convenient to pull the food out and then put the food back in. But sometimes these suitcases sit for most of the year being completely unused and it would be some space that you could use for something. All right, now my final word of advice. Get rid of stuff. Look around your house. What do you have that is just taking up space, right? Right, I think this is something that we have struggled with and we're working on, but there's just a lot of stuff in our lives that, that owns us that we can just repurpose to somebody else <laughs> for some other and reason. let it own them. And, and uh, we can free up space that we can use for, uh, for food or putting other things there so that we can use other space elsewhere for our food storage. As preppers, we tend to have a hoarder mentality and that is actually not a good and healthy mentality. Yes, there are things that we need to acquire. Yes, we need to have our food storage. It is very important. But if something is broken and you save it because someday you might need that, it really, what, how is it gonna be effective later if it's broken and not useful to you now? Yeah, probably later you won't be able to either find it or find the parts to fix it. And so, you know, Sometimes it's just better to let some things go so and that you learn. can have the space you need for more important yeah. things. Learn to live with less. 
learn to live without. Again, we have some great resources here that you can Google. The Provident Prepper, Long-Term Food Storage, Creative Solutions to Build a Critical Asset. Also, The Provident Prepper, Three Months Supply of Food, Amazing Peace of Mind, and it truly is. It truly, truly is amazing, uh, the peace of mind that this brings. And also, The Provident Prepper, Food Storage, How Old is Too Old? And this provides some really good guidance on the life of, of food and maybe have some surprises in there for you. So uh, we encourage you to take a look at these. Wasn't that terrific? We have some pretty incredible friends. So did it help you understand maybe some new thought processes about where you have space to store some food for an emergency? We hope it did. And now for the question of the day. What is your most creative way of storing food? Hey, thanks for being part of the solution.